Well, hello there again, and I hope you enjoyed that first video about radar reflectivity and everything that goes with it uh, from composite reflectivity to the different tilts, etc. If you missed that first video, be sure to check it out. Now we're going to move into radar velocity. We're going to talk about what velocity is. We're going to talk about the different products, and we're going to dive in to how to read them and what it means. So let's, you know, strap in and let's get this thing going. This is a radar velocity image. This image shows the wind direction in thunderstorms. So let's figure out how it all works. Now, how velocity works is simple. When the radar signal returns to the radar, the radar can detect shifts in the frequency of the waves returning back. The radar detects that change in frequency as the direction the wind is blowing, aka the direction precipitation is moving. This is the base velocity image you are seeing here. Now in this particular radar image, the red is winds blowing away from the radar, and the green is winds blowing towards the radar. The purple areas are called range folded areas, and we're totally going to get to that here in a second, but let's get to the reds and greens for a bit. Now let's take a look at a tilt one of base velocity data. Now, here's the first thing to keep in mind when it comes to base velocity data. It's going to be scanning at the lowest level of the atmosphere that the radar can see. However, that does not mean that it's looking below the cloud-based layer or at the surface. Radar shoots out in a straight line from the radar beam. The Earth curves around. That's a very simple thing. And so as the radar beam gets further away from the radar, it's actually seeing further up in the atmosphere. So when you're, you know, 25, 30, 40 miles away from the radar, it's actually seeing several thousand feet above the surface, and that's actually above the cloud-based layer. So you're not getting an actual picture of what's going on with the winds at the surface with storms that are several, you know, dozen miles away. Now let's dive into this example velocity image. The first thing we need to do though, we need to back up and go back to base reflectivity. Okay, well here you are. Here's your big image, uh, reflectivity image, showing what looks to be at least two supercells, uh, one there by Mountain Park and Snyder on the top of the image, one south of the Red River there. Uh, I would say that's west of Vernon, Texas right now, and they're both moving northeast. There might even be one behind that. So how do we know if these are supercells? How do we uh, read if there's a tornado imminent, etc.? Let's go to the velocity image and we will find out. Okay, we're going to take a look at the very beginning here, at the very top storm on what was reflectivity. We're going to highlight that area now for you right here. Now this is the storm we're looking at and we're going to kind of assess what's, what's it doing on uh, velocity here. And we're hopefully through this, we will teach you how to read this. Now, you can see the reds and greens very close together. They're very bright that's a good sign that there's some low-level rotation for sure. Uh, the You see when they're packed together like this, again, the greens mean their winds are blowing towards the radar, red means they're blowing away. So if you use that, the big black donut in the middle there, highlighting it, that shows that the storm is rotating clearly north of Manitou, south of Snyder. Now, if you think about it in terms of the storm rotating counterclockwise, you can see the reds are blowing away from the radar, so they're moving actually north, the winds are moving north, and then the greens, they're moving south. So you can actually see that counterclockwise rotation in the bottom parts of the storm. That's pretty cool. And if you switch back to reflectivity for a second, you can clearly see that the area of rotation we're looking at coincides with the big fat hook echo on radar. So. This means that this storm definitely has some rotation with it. It should be watched, and you know you're, you would have to watch that uh, for sure for tornadic development. And most importantly, uh, it's just it's a storm you need to watch. It's very severe. It's just mean. So again, let's uh, take a look at this radar image, uh, the velocity image, actually up at tilt three in the mid levels of the atmosphere, because I want to point out a couple of other things further up that you can use velocity for. Now taking a look at that northern storm again, uh, you can see in the upper levels the rotation is definitely still there, it's definitely more broad, but it is a supercell. That's a rotating updraft, it needs to be watched, and it should be watched. Now if you look down below, uh, you can see the storms to the south, uh, the one, let's go back to reflectivity for a second and highlight it. We're talking about this storm here west of Vernon, south of the Red River. 
Visually, on reflectivity, this storm is obviously a supercell, but let's take a look at how reflectivity at the upper levels can sometimes be a bit tricky to interpret, because it really is. This takes skillful interpretation. Here the exact same area is highlighted. We'll remove that highlight now so you can see it clearly. And you can see in the upper levels of the atmosphere there is some rotation, but look how little, how much it pales in comparison to the storm to the north. The storm to the south is obviously not nearly as organized, the rotational off not nearly as strong. It is rotating. Uh, you can tell that by the reflectivity image as well as the velocity image. But at the same time, it's not something that looks to be as strong as the northern storm, which is just an absolute behemoth. And it must be noted, too, that the northern storm had just finished or was just finishing producing a tornado at the time of this image. So to recap on base velocity one more time, reds are winds blowing away from the radar, greens are winds blowing towards the radar, the purple is range folded areas. We will still get to that in a second. But now it's time to talk about storm relative velocity. Very important topic we should totally cover it so let's dive right into it and yeah there's an explosion of colors there uh, it's not a rainbow or unicorn or anything like that it's just an explosion of colors what you can see is that the it's just changed the radar image has definitely changed there's different colors let's cycle back and forth between both of these radar images here's storm relative velocity already and then let's switch to base velocity and now back to storm relative and now back to base Okay, so you see there are some definite differences in what this is showing. Well, why is that? Why is storm relative velocity so different? Now, storm relative velocity takes into account the storm's motion when calculating the velocity. And when you do that, you actually will get a clearer picture of how a storm actually looks with regards to the physics of the storm's actual motion. That's important because sometimes rotations can actually be hidden from view and sometimes they'll look really good on base velocity but when you take into account storm motion it actually doesn't look nearly as good so storm relative velocity is actually a product I use quite a bit myself because I'm a, just a big fan of accounting for storm motion when it comes to rotation now the highlighted area is that storm to the north we've been looking at and you can still see that rotation that has been indicated on base velocity several times switch back and now back okay so you can see that it's there. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, folding over, it looks like, in the rotation. So it's still a strong area, needs to be watched. Just showing you that, uh, you know, you don't see anything else that has popped up on this that wasn't there before. But it's definitely an area of rotation up there on the north side that needs to be watched and watched very closely for the time being. Now remember the purple range folded areas? This is where we're going to talk about those lovely things. Basically, when you have a radar return that's sent out, radar sends a, a beam out and it gets it back, sometimes it just can't tell what the heck happened to it. So when that happens, you get this purple area. And that means that the radar simply isn't picking up what that is go what's going on there. It's detected an echo, but it has not figured out which way it is moving. So that is called a range folded area. Also could display it as, you know, incomplete data even. But that's just a limitation to the Doppler radar technology. It sucks, but there's not much you can do about it. Now, that's a basic overview of the base velocity, storm relative velocity, and also taking a look at velocity aloft. The velocity products are essential to detecting severe weather, including tornadoes and up to damaging wind gusts. You can actually tell that, especially if the storm is closer to the radar site. But at this time, if the storm is, you know, 40, 50 miles away, you're not going to get a clear picture of what's going on underneath it. That's why storm spotters, storm chasers are so vital. But anyways, this was a basic brief overview of velocity. We're going to have a lot more about this uh, throughout Titan U, so uh, check out those videos and uh, stay tuned. We're about to head on to the next lesson.